get a one. Beige there, yeah. We're going to do an in-depth look into this new Dell Position 5550s display. Now this one I've got here is a full HD non-touch version. It is the matte version as well. So it's not the glossy version there. So what we'll do is we're going to look at the luminance of this or the brightness of this display. We'll also look at the color profiling and we'll also test if it uses PWM as well. So let's get down to it. We're going to test out the luminance or the brightness of the display. So first off, I've made sure I've got not light turned off and also disable change brightness automatically. Now I'm going to use my XY-I1 display calibration tool to help me do the measurements. And the measurement that we need to take note of is this one here called current. It is measured in candle per square meter. Now one candle per square meter equals one nit of brightness that you might be more familiar with. Now there are 10 increments to hitting those brightness buttons on your keyboard and we're going to go for each one. So I'm going down to increment zero, which is the bottom lowest. So we got increment number zero, it is reading at 34 candle per screen, which is 34 nit of brightness. So we'll go increment number one is 49 nit. Increment number two is 99 nit. Increment number three is 149 nit. Increment number four is 199 nit. Increment number five is 248 nit. Increment number six is 298 nit. Increment number seven is 346 nit. Increment number eight is 396 nit. Increment number nine is 438 nit. Increment number 10 at its maximum, it is 492 nit. So 492 nit is its maximum brightness for this display. Now to help out the photographers and videographers, we're going to try and help find that sweet spot of what the recommended, which is 120 candle per square meter. So we're going to actually do this. So I'm going to bring the increments all the way down to zero and go on increment number one, increment number two, we're hitting at 99. Increment number three is 148, which is too hot. So we're going to actually fine tune it by going to the display settings and we're going to try and fine tune it. So let's look down to 24. Now at Value of 24, you're looking at 119 candle per square meter. So that's what you're looking for. Now has been color calibrated using the XY i1 display. So I'm going to show you what it looks like before when it comes out of factory from Dell and after calibration. Okay, so this is the before, this is high key tone, and after. Well, wow, I can definitely see it's gone a lot darker and also it's gone a little bit more cooler as well. So this is before out of factory after calibration. That's a bit of a difference there. So I'm just going to go before again and let's go for mid-tones before and after. Oh, that is a lot different there for sure. And I'm going to go for low key and after. Definitely. I'm going to go before for Scion, before and after. And I'm going to go with Magenta before and after. And yellow before and after. And also red before and after. Definitely red looks a lot more redder for sure. I can definitely tell you that. Green before. And after, same with green, looks much more greener for me. Now blue, before and after, something I kind of expected for the blue. I'll live before and after. And we'll go all the way down to brown, before and after. I have set the screen to be about 120 candle per square meter. Pastel before and after. What's a lot more? And colored before and after. All right, and just black and white high key tone before and after. Now that would make a massive difference for sure if I. 
uh, didn't have a color calibrated before and after for mid-tone black and white now for low-key black and white before and after hope this actually helps you out I will share the color profile I created using the XYI1 display. I'll put in a link in the description below for you to download. Now be wary that is using my ambient light. Now, if you are serious about colors and you do things with colors professionally, I do advise you to have your own color calibration tool because it is a lifesaver. And again, it does work off ambient light, but at least the color profile I share will, will give you a good starting point. If you see my other color calibration, videos on different displays. You'll find I still like to use the Spider 3 Pro. Now, even though it is old hardware, it still works fine. And I just generally like the software it can actually overall demonstrate if there is a color shift after calibration. So this is what it looks like before calibration. So it's out of factory. And this is what it looks like after calibration. So I can definitely see it's gone a lot darker and it's gonna actually go a lot more warmer as well too. So it looks to be very consistent with my XYI1 display calibration tools or after, before, and after. Testing the color gamut coverage of the display, it measured in at 98.4% sRGB coverage and 77.1% Adobe RGB coverage. That's not too bad at all, pretty high. Let's test if the display uses PWM. Now, if it's screen, uses PWM and you're using it for long periods of time, it can increase the chance of eye strain, eye fatigue, and sometimes headaches. On the right, I've got the Dell Position 5550 with the full HD non-touch display here. That's matte display as well. And on the left here, I've got a screen that I know uses PWM. So we're gonna demonstrate this through another camera. Uh, just because it's easy to demonstrate what we're looking for. Uh, PDM actually will come up with a lot of horizontal lines as I actually increase the shutter speed here. So I'm going to start increasing the shutter speed on my other camera here and you hopefully should start seeing some horizontal lines on this and that's because of the modulation of the screen. Hopefully we should be able to start to see some on the left hand side and I definitely don't see much or anything at all on the right hand side which is fantastic there. So. I can definitely see a lot of horizontal lines from my left screen here and on the right we don't see any which is great news so the full hd non-touch display does not use pwm if you find this video informative and enjoyed it give it a like if you haven't done already subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom of the screen i do try to upload a new video every week and just remember guys imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting i'll see you next video